open. <laughs> and uh, we're continuing with part two, which is looking now at the practical living during the day. Okay, which is your <laughs> conscious mind application. Now, in your conscious mind application during the day, this is like when you're experiencing your general thoughts and your general reactions mm -hmm. as you move through your day. Uh, initially, when you start this process, you'll become quite aware of <laughs> what you really think, <laughs> which is like all the time oh, yeah. about everything and anything. Sometimes really just going in there and wandering off to... <laughs> God knows what you created inside your head was <laughs> into all sorts of various directions mm. and really completely out of reality that to the extent where we will wonder how in the world are you actually functioning in the world? <laughs> it's like, how do you move, participate and really walk? All of it is mostly unconscious and you're there off in La La Land in the mind. <laughs> Actually, always in dreamland and sleeping, yeah. never awake here in what is real here in reality, to the extent where no one's really actually seeing what's going on in this world, what's going on with ourselves, how yeah. we're in fact accepting and allowing ourselves and our living to be. Yeah. So, in the beginning, stopping thoughts and reactions can be and most certainly will be an overwhelming experience because you, for the first time, kind of for a moment, step out of your conscious mind experience and become like an objective participant of yourself yeah. and you stand outside the box and while experiencing it inside at the same time and you start seeing whoa <laughs> you know yeah. the thinking is just kind of automatic yeah so firstly when you get to that initial first point of seeing how much it is you're thinking you'll start your process with breathing um, that's the best way to throw out the storm of your thoughts. Just find a starting point for yourself um, within the physical to start from. Yeah. So this might take a month, three months um, to, like for example, to stabilize you in the physical and then you just walk during your day and then you just focus on your breathing. Um, it's not to have be possessed by your breathing, meaning <laughs> many beings tend to, for example, just try and focus on their breathing and not think. Yeah. When you can't really do that because your thinking is automated from your physical mind, your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind, and your conscious mind. Yeah. So it's not like you can breathe and not think. Mm. Thinking is a process that you stop throughout your entire process. Yeah. Up until <coughs> you get to the physical mind you're going to face thinking yeah. and even then you're going to face thinking because but the thinking changes okay. in different forms like in your conscious mind you have your um like your pictures and your words and conversations and things like that subconscious mind thinking you have more like a resonant physical back chat experiences yeah. that come up your unconscious mind thinking will be like behaviors like throwing the keys a certain way or yeah. picking up a cup a certain way and things yeah. like that that's a form of thinking yeah. um, or action within thinking and then you have your physics and then uh, eventually when you get to your existential process where you face the physical as yourself your thinking will be in the experience of um, experiencing other people's thinking within the physical because you're now walking the physical process with everyone else. Yeah. So it's like you will experience everyone as you. And then your process of assisting and supporting others comes through and walking their process until everyone's physical and quiet and yeah. there's no more thoughts. Yeah. Makes sense. So that just sort of thinking process changes. Therefore, um, be careful of the tendency to want to step out or away from thinking to focusing on breath. That's yeah. not what we're saying when we're saying breathing. No. Breathing is simply for you to find a starting point to be able to kind of stand outside the box yet experience what's inside the box at yeah. the same time. Like standing outside yourself yet experiencing yourself at the same time. 
the in that position of outside, you can like direct yourself inside yeah. at the same time. Yeah, and like if you think a lot, um, you just don't have to get all this reaction and stuff, and like you just see the thoughts for what they are. Like exactly. Just thinking. It's not like you have to act on everything and get all these emotions and feelings and stuff. Exactly. So you like eventually in your breathing you realize that you can make a decision yeah. to not participate in the thoughts. Exactly. The thoughts will come up, yeah. but you can in that moment take a breath, let it go, not participate, and then just focus on what you're doing in the physical. Because yeah. we have a tendency of like while we're doing something, go into the mind and like kind of blank out yeah. and think about various other things, go into a whole emotional turmoil, yeah. create back chat, go back to memories. <laughs> and yeah. when we into like this whole conglomerate network, instead of just being here typing, for example, yeah. or being here buying groceries, or um, being here watching something, uh, a movie, or being here reading. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the main focus points, especially in the beginning, the first three, four months your breathing and pushing yourself to bring yourself back here to the physical in a way. So when you see yourself, you've wandered off. That will mostly happen in the beginning of your process, maybe even in the first year, uh, where if you're extremely disciplined, <laughs> in the first year or so, it'll start stopping, if not between one to three years where you'll find you have a tendency to go and wander off in your mind. Yeah. Um, all you do is um, you breathe and you bring yourself back here and you focus again on what you're busy doing. Yeah. We're always busy doing something. Yeah. So it's very easy thus to discipline yourself and to focus on what you're busy doing. Yeah. Um, just take a breath. Okay, I was typing. Okay, I'm yeah. here, I'm typing. When you're reading and your mind's going, you go, okay, I'm here reading. Yeah. It's always cool to also voice yourself if you want to. Yeah, definitely. Go, I'm here reading, and then you read. Yeah. Um, I'm here typing, and you type. I'm here making coffee, and make coffee. Yeah. And sometimes it's like you you get this thought, and you want to know where it's going. And you're like, oh, where's it going? And you want to follow the thought, but then it's always like, it never comes in new or anything. It's like, it always go to this. Connects you into yeah, the and and yeah. patterns and habits. Exactly, so mm -hmm. it's like, no idea to follow the thought. Exactly. And it's just not always also said is that it's always curiosity. Yeah. It's like a curiosity. Exactly. You must not accept and allow yourself to go into a curiosity because <laughs> that's what the mind used to manipulate yeah. you to take you somewhere else when yeah. what you must always remember is reality. And then again, what is very important to realize is it's not to walk this process in fear, mm. meaning to go, oh my God, I went into the mind. Or... <laughs> Uh, oh my god, I'm not in the physical. I mean, this is going to be a lifelong process. Yeah. This is a lifelong commitment yeah. to changing you and changing the world as we're walking a multi-dimensional process. So really don't be hard on yourself, yet be disciplined, yeah. be strict with yourself. But not in the context of fear or uh, reaction, simply mm. in understanding. Yeah. So. It's not like also to take a point of ego in terms of, oh, you know, I kind of went to my mind, like, so what? And I can always bring myself back here. I mean, that's also <laughs> egoistic self-manipulation yeah. in trying to uh, validate or justify your acceptance and allowance for going into the mind. Yeah. It's simply to, when you see yourself, wonder or breathe, okay, I'm here, and participate. Um, it's to walk it as comfortably as possible. I mean, you may go into that whole experience of fear and judging yourself and things like that, and that's okay. I mean, you eventually get to the point where you realize the ridiculousness of it yeah. and simply understand that you're walking a process that in, in space and time. So it's going to take space and time yeah. to uh, walk yourself back here into the physical. So initially, in your daily participation, that is how you walk. You yeah. bring yourself back here to the physical. You breathe. And um, you see what you've been thinking, just breathe here in the physical, breathe here in the physical. Yeah. And eventually, as you manifest this as part of your life, it becomes more and more easier to not participate in the thoughts. Mm. So the key is no participation, do not follow the thoughts. 
Um, now, in terms of the difference between thoughts and looking at something, yeah. and then um, that's also quite a common thing that people don't understand. Mm. Like, let's say you're reading and you f you'll see, like, when you're thinking about food or wanting something to drink, it's like something that comes up and it comes up with like a physical experience. Yeah. That's normal. That's your body saying, hey, yeah. I'd like a cup of tea. Yeah. Or, hey, I'd like a sandwich. Or, <laughs> yeah. you know, something yeah. like that. That's normal. Yeah. Um, thinking is like a picture of your grandmother's house in 1991 came up and you remember yourself in the experience and from there you go and remember that you went to the beach with them and <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh crap like that yeah. or you're sitting there and you're thinking <laughs> about yesterday and that person and what they said and what they yeah. said to you and I mean there's nothing you can do about it in exactly. that moment that you're yeah. sitting there and reading yeah it won't change because you're thinking about it exactly if it's something significant that comes up and you see your thoughts come up and you react to it yeah what you can do is if you want to direct it and you have time go write it out or speak it out do something with it yeah. practically, directively. But thinking about it, trying to change it in your mind, that's manipulation of yeah. yourself in wanting to utilize that point in some way or another to boost one's own ego or yeah. superiority or validate or justify some form of victimization yeah. in relation to the point, in relation to your self acceptances and allowances. Yeah. I mean, the mind is an insanity in itself. Yep. So. If you cannot do anything about it immediately, what you do is you breathe, you let it go. If you can, make a note of it. Yeah. I would suggest, especially if it's like a significant reaction that you experience when you've seen that you've wandered off in your mind and you've looked at a point that's come up as thought and it was like where you had a heated uh, conversation with someone and you had a reaction inside yourself and you see in your mind that you suppress that reaction. Um, then you can, for example, take a notebook, write down that point, and when you have a moment, you can go and investigate that. Yeah. Then you're walking, for example, a subconscious and unconscious point then in, an, in the evening, because that would be an indication of a subconscious and unconscious point that you can walk. Yeah. Because there you suppress something, and you reacted to it um, significantly. But most of the thoughts you'll see is really arbitrary and unnecessary to follow during the day. Yeah. So you just let go, breathe, be here, focus on reality. Yeah. Get the stuff done during the day that needs to be done. That is what's important. Yeah. Many people don't live or most of the time don't get to anything because everything <laughs> depends on thinking. Yeah. When you can utilize your time more effectively and just bring yourself back here. Yeah. Reading, writing, working, walking, and practicing on being here. Remember, it's practicing. You're practicing. Yeah. So don't be hard on yourself, no. but also don't manipulate. Exactly, yeah. Because you've got to find that balance for yourself. Yeah. I mean, you know yourself so well. Yeah. You'll know when you're manipulating or yeah. when you're serious or when you're direct or when you're just being silly and <laughs> ridiculous. And yeah. You know, it's just you've got to be someone honest, that's all. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. How to walk it. Um, so during your day, what is the focus? Breathe, be here. Yeah. I'm doing something physical. That's the beauty of <coughs> the physical. We're always in the physical. Yeah. Um, we just haven't been the physical with the physical equal in one yet. That's the process that we're walking. So got that when significant stuff yeah, comes up. That sounds great. Then you make a note. Um, yeah. I would carry like a notepad or yeah. something in my bag if I'm out of town or at work or somewhere yeah. where I can note down points that I can work yeah. with or look at in the evenings yeah, or whenever I have time. Remember, it's not to try and also do everything at once. No. It's really, you can prioritize even the points that come up. What's been the most significant ones that you reacted to? Yeah. Always look at the most significant ones. Because even sometimes you'll find that some of the points that you noted were actually interconnected or similar points, for example. Yeah. And then with just taking on the one that was most significant, you've already been working through yeah. the others. Yeah. So what happens with you walking the process in such a way, multidimensionally, is you're walking yourself during the day. 
which means you're already stopping your participation in your conscious mind. You're already bringing yourself back here into the physical, okay? In the evenings, walking through the subconscious and unconscious things, the more you walk this every day, you'll find the less your thoughts and reactions will become, yeah. the more physical you will become, and the more expansive and in-depth and deeper and specific yeah. your writings, your insights, and things like that will become in your subconscious and unconscious, because you're moving closer to the physical, which is your subconscious and unconscious and physical mind, and thus more things will start coming up in and during the evenings or in your writings. Yeah. Makes sense. Definitely. So that's one part you can walk. Yeah. Are you very clear, practically? Yeah, it makes understand sense. Understand everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you're back home, you listen to it again, um, you apply it into your own life. You have a look at if it is clear enough. Yeah. If there's something that I said that like doesn't come into congruency with your life, yeah. then you let me know yeah. and we'll have a look at how we can change it. Yeah. Because it's like just a blueprint. Yeah. Makes Sounds sense. great. Yeah. Okay. So that's one dimension of the conscious mind, subconscious and unconscious that you can walk. Yeah. The other dimension that you can look at is your practical corrective application. So like these parts that I'm explaining, for example, you and Marcus can work as individuals. Yeah. This is like your individual application for yourself yeah. during the day. Um, and then later on we'll walk what it means to then the agreement flower with the words yeah. and that's where you walk the process of standing equal and one with one another, yet remaining individuals within walking the individual process. It's like fascinating how this is even possible. Like <laughs> there's equality in one as yet individuality at yeah. the same time. Very awesome. Okay, so the other dimension is your practical corrective application. Now, as we said earlier, um, with regards to, for example, words and self forgiveness, or even points, or whatever you're doing in your writings and you're applying self forgiveness. What we've done is we've possessed ourselves by our own mind, our mind that consists of and exists as parts of ourselves that we've separated ourselves into. Yeah. So all we're doing is we're now like standing back yet still as it and changing ourselves as all those parts and in that change becoming equal in one as one being here. Yeah. Yet equal in one with all, not just separate constructed parts mm. and systems and constructs and crap within that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> creating the whole fuck up that this world has become. Yeah. So what we've done is we've possessed ourselves by the mind. What does self-forgiveness do? Self-forgiveness and writing release self from that position so that you can see yourself as the system, the entity, the construct, the design, the program, the patterns, the habits, everything that you have accepted and allowed yourself to be or become possessed by. So you've literally got to exorcise yourself yeah. through self-forgiveness and writing. In that process, it's like we were possessed by the mind in like a hypnotic state. Yeah. Self-forgiveness takes you out of that sleep state where you like wake up as the mind or as the point or part that possessed you so that you can see yourself. So the process of self-forgiveness is actually for the first time looking in the mirror and like seeing what the fuck I have become and accepted yeah. and allowed. Yeah. So that within that seeing, you can change. Yeah. Because I mean, if you don't know what it is that you've accepted and allowed, if you don't get to know yourself as what you are, how you are, and how it is that you've become who you are, how are you going to change yourself? Yeah. So, self-forgiveness is writing, is getting to know and to see and to face me as what I have accepted and allowed me to become. Yeah. To, in that seeing and facing of myself, be able to change myself. Yeah. That change happens through practical, corrected application. Will you actually change yourself in your living behavior, in your reality? And that's a point that many beings miss. They yeah. think just writing or speaking about it or doing self-forgiveness will change self. Mm -hmm. That's not so. Uh -huh. It is tools that we live to change ourselves yeah. in practical living application. 
So self forgiveness is just the and the right thing is just the preparation. Yeah. The real change comes through self changing in living. Yeah. That means the following. Now let's say for example, and you can walk this at the same time as you walk that other person that I just explained earlier. It's like where you see and this is particularly when a moment where your thoughts and your reactions come up at the same time. Now We've discussed what you can do with thoughts. Yeah. Now we're what happens when thoughts and reactions of the conscious mind comes up. Again, breathing. Why is breathing so important again? Is that it's the one point that brings you here in and as and with the physical. That you bring yourself back to reality. Yeah. Back to here, out of mind. So that you can give yourself a starting point to be able to, re- to direct yourself as the mind. Because what does thinking and reaction mean? It means that you've become possessed by the mind again. Yeah. You've got to immediately, in a moment, take yourself out of it. And that you do through breath. Yeah. It's not the solution. No. It's not the Mr. Fix-It. <laughs> it is a tool again for the moment to get you out of the mind into the physical. Yeah. You're going to have to obviously change that point or that habit or behavior so self-forgiveness, writing, and practical living application. But when it comes to a moment where you see, uh-oh, I'm possessed, first step, breath. Yeah. There, many will find it difficult because we're so prone to wanting to be right, yeah. wanting to win, uh, wanting to give our opinion, our point of view. Yeah. And you'll find the most prominent point where the thoughts and reactions come in where it like kind of overwhelms you is when you're in a point of competition, comparison, jealousy toward towards something or someone yeah. else. Um, it's an ego thing, yeah. basically. So, um, and it will be difficult for most to give up, most prominently males, uh, because of the tendency towards the ego dominant superiority. Females, because of their existence throughout time primarily being submissive um uh like silenced suppressive yeah. uh, this will more come up as back chat in the secret mind yeah. you won't be so prone to acting it out or becoming like visibly angry or exerted out like men tend to do yeah. uh women will be more like the internal secret mind yeah. back chat, which is exactly the same yeah just in a different way I see, I see. so for males and females to just take into consideration this point yeah. i'm not saying it is always like this and like black and white yeah. but for most cases this is so yeah for m- females for example that is more male orientated i just have a more of a male design will be then exertive in their uh conscious mind thoughts and reactions yeah but otherwise, normally most of it is secret mind and back chat. So even when you find yourself in secret mind and back chat position, same thing. Yeah. Stop yourself through breathing. Yeah. How do you know when you're stopping and when you're not suppressing? Suppressing is where you'll talk yourself out of it in yeah. your own mind, where you go, I'm not going to look at it or yeah. yeah, um, like you like shake your head away or you walk away in anger or you throw stuff around or you know you do something to release the energy but it's not a stopping it's not a standing a stopping would be a decision yeah you make a decision you say to yourself i stop i breathe i just let it go sometimes it'll be so extreme physically that you have to give yourself a moment to breathe it through yeah if you can go lie down, say to the person, just give me a moment. I've <laughs> possessed myself here. Yeah. Especially if it's someone you're comfortable with, yeah, you can yeah. easily say it. Yeah. And then you just take yourself out of the moment. You go, you breathe, you calm yourself, and then you go back yeah. to face it, and you speak it out. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds really good, yeah. Just that's how you move your practical creative application, especially when you walk in your first layer of your process of the mind. Yeah. You use breath. And you breathe it. Obviously, those extensive possessions, it won't happen often. No. Um, they may accumulate depending on how you are walking your daily process of stopping your thoughts. Meaning, what does stopping your thoughts mean? Just not participating in them and breathing in the physical um, will depend on the extent of 
possession of entities as your back chat and your secret mind and your unconscious mind will emerge. Yeah. Also, it depends on your life. It depends on so many things will come out, but it's always to just be prepared um, for when it does happen because you won't know. Yeah. I mean, the extent to which we possess ourselves by the mind is extreme. I mean, everyone yeah. can see that just by the extent to which we're thinking. Yeah. And that's quite extreme. So when those points come up, you just breathe. You stabilize yourself here until you're stable through breath. And then you make sure that you speak clearly here. Yeah. Even if you've got to slow your down, slow your down, slow yourself <laughs> down through your speaking, yeah. you do that as well. Um, you change your voice. I mean, I do it still here sometimes. I find that my starting point in my voice isn't clear then I'll stop yeah I'll breathe I'll make sure I'm in my body and then I'll speak yeah it's pretty cool that's like your practical sense of application that's changing yourself immediately in a moment yeah does that make sense it does yeah so obviously if you see something becomes a pattern where after like a week or a month you see the same reactions coming yeah. up and you're breathing through it and then you're stopping through obviously you've got to go deeper into yeah. it because this cannot be accepted and allowed to continue yeah. um, then you do your writing your self forgiveness um, you have a look at what is it that you're accepting and allowing what is the thought that's coming up what is the reaction that's coming up why are they coming up why are you accepting and allowing them what do you want to get out of it yeah. um, what's the greed within the moment what's the ego wanting yeah. you know ask yourself those questions yeah to lay it out, to understand yourself, to be able to stop it before it comes up. So that eventually, you'll see a thought come up and you'll flag point it, meaning you'll be aware of, oh my God, <laughs> this thought's coming up, I know exactly where it's going to go if yeah. I can follow this thought. And then you apply that point of no participation, breathing here and speaking normally. Yeah. I mean, even with speaking to people, you're within these possession points because it's become an addiction. Sometimes feel the energies like move in you while you're speaking. Again, just breathe. Just breathe. It's just it's not to participate. Yeah. There's a difference between participation and suppressing. Yeah. Meaning it's not to suppress it where you're like, for example, literally it's like you wipe yourself in a way and you like ignore it. Yeah. Whereas not participating is, it's coming up inside you, but you're <coughs> breathing through it. Yeah. And then eventually it'll dissipate. It won't just suddenly go away. It'll become less and less and less and less. That means you're breathing through it. Yeah. But if it's something that just suddenly stops and it's like gone, yeah. then you've suppressed it. Yeah. Obviously you can't change that moment. You'll have to wait for it to come yeah. up again. Yeah. Because it makes sense. But it makes sense. Yeah. Now, what is suppression? What is releasing something? Um, obviously, you can cut these parts for yourself as you're walking your process. Yeah. Um, but I'm just discussing some of the major points. So you've got, if you're working through something, it'll release gradually. Yeah. If you're suppressing something, it like just suddenly went away. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes okay. Sense. Any questions on practical quicker application, daily application, thoughts, mm. reactions? No, I think we're pretty clear. Clear? Clear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, the self group statements. Yeah. What would be cool for yourself, which you can do as well. It's like, do like a, a map in a way, but it's more like a layout of your mind, of thoughts that you generally like think. Yeah. Um, like <coughs> what points occupy your mind most and then look at self-corrective applications that you can speak within yourself and then immediately apply. Uh, within those points. Yeah. So let's say, for example, what comes up is tiredness. And you're feeling tired, but you've had like six, seven hours sleep. Yeah. Um, and you have written about it, you've done your self forgiveness about it, 
and if still things do like come up then you support yourself further through self-corrective application in your self-corrective statements then you speak to yourself aloud or within yourself i've slept six to seven hours if this experience of tiredness is unacceptable yeah because i have rested i am rested i'm here and you just breathe so it's a very simple state yeah or like you see a pattern of um getting irritated when uh Marcus just leaves his, his cup around, for example, <laughs> and you've spoken to him about it, but you've spoken to him about it, and um, but you realize that you're speaking to him about it was done within the reaction of irritation. Yeah. So obviously he's going to continue doing it <laughs> because you haven't worked through the yeah. irritation. And um, and it's kept on going, you've done yourself a few this, and it's like... Um, you walk through the right and you realize that the irritation comes from your tendency to want like uh, cleanliness because you've linked cleanliness to control yeah. and you're getting irritated because it's like a moment where you don't have control yeah. over. Yeah. And then what you do is you see the cup, you get irritated, you're like, okay, <laughs> I breathe, I'm here, the cup is there. Just because that cup is on that table doesn't mean I've lost control of my whole world and my whole self. Yeah, exactly. The cup is there. Yeah. I know Marcus is using it. He'll pick it up. Yeah. It's his only cup he has. So I leave it there. Yeah. I breathe and I walk. Fuck, I'll leave my cup there as well. Yeah, Why not? exactly. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, it's not like, yeah. Like, just seeing it for what it is. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. If you ever get stuck on any point, and we'll still walk through those you sent us. Yeah. Um, then you email, we're here, ask yeah. questions, and for anyone else listening, there's a forum. Yeah. Um, if points come up where you see a habit or pattern, you've done the self forgiveness, you've done the right things, you've, you're doing the practice application, but it's like it's still there, yeah. and you've got to be more assertive, like step it up with your self-corrective statements. Yeah. You just speak them every time for yourself. Yeah. Because like you've got to redesign who you are in physical reality. Yeah. The most effective way to do that is to redefine what you're experiencing for yourself. Yeah. And that you do in the moment and you can really be creative with things. Yeah. Or like the postman comes and the postman rings the doorbell <laughs> every morning <laughs> and it's like the usual time and everything's normal but you have connected uh, frustration to it because you're not ready to wake up that time in the morning yeah. uh, you want to sleep and then you realize okay this is like a point of where you're only considering yourself uh, you're not considering how for example the system is working that yeah. that is the postman's job and he's whole life is dependent on that one point mm-hmm. and it's making around. Yeah. You're receiving your post, he's delivering yeah. it. Yeah. And you know, so you just talk yourself into the yeah. whole point of see it for what it is, like he doesn't do it because he wants to irritate you. Yeah. It's like you look at what is the irritation in the morning. Oh my god, I see it's a habit and I want to sleep in because I want to have that experience and I've created an addiction to the experience of sleeping in the mornings and staying in and I have to find myself according to it. <laughs> then you change it, then you deliberately fuck that point yeah. and wake up earlier than the postman. Yeah. You know, okay. it's like you play with it. I mean yeah. you can have so much fun with yourself <laughs> and changing your world and not accepting crap yeah. from yourself. Yeah. See how you can make your life so much better just through changing your starting point, changing who you are and getting to know yourself and looking at the world in itself from a principle from an existential greater perspective, the greater yeah. picture always, that we're walking this not only for ourselves, but for fucking everything in this yeah. world. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Got any questions so far? <laughs> no. I think this is like the basics yeah. of yourself and your world. And me and Marcus can walk these parts that we've discussed so far individually. It's your individual processes yeah. we've now discussed. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. <laughs>